Okay, traders, welcome to this week's live market analysis session with me, Patrick Munley. If you can hear me uh, loud and clear and you can see the Tickmill welcome screen, if you could type a Y in the chat box just so that uh, I know you can uh, hear and see the screen. Good stuff. Thanks very much. Okay, let's get going. Uh, before we do, as always, we want to adhere to Risk disclaimer, we should all be aware that uh, trading financial instruments carries an inherent amount of risk. Uh, secondly, and most importantly with respect to today's conversation, um, the views and opinions expressed by me uh, during today's session are solely mine and they are not indicative or representative of Tick Mill UK Limited or Tick Mill Europe Limited. Okay, so uh, just before we jump into today's uh, material, for those who are here for the first time, a quick overview of my background. Um, I have uh, I've been involved in the financial markets for the past 15 years. Uh, I haven't always been involved in financial markets. After I graduated from university, I joined a city consulting firm. After a couple of years of learning the ropes, I left with a few colleagues and we did a startup, uh, that startup underwent uh, some pretty rapid growth. And after a uh, four to five year period, I cashed in my, my stake in the business. And so I had, uh, had some capital and a, and a bunch of time on my hands. And I decided to explore my passion for markets due to the nature of the work I was involved in. I'd had a front row seat to the dot-com boom and bust. I'd seen people uh, make and lose a fortune in the markets uh, quite literally overnight at times. Um, and so I started I guess what you'd refer to as gambling, um, day trading the S&P 500, market was trending north, and I caught some lucky early breaks and started to make some solid and then quite some significant gains. Um, but as is often the case in this game, uh, the beginner's luck runs out, and it certainly did that for me. I, uh, I gave back in quite short order all the gains I'd made, and then I took a, a personal six-figure hit on my, my capital. Uh, this was a wake-up call for me, um, and it was uh, a, it was a point at which I needed to decide to approach trading as a business, and could I actually make a sustainable income from trading? Uh, so I sought out a mentor, worked with him for uh, 18 months to nearly two years, really, um, and he really helped me not just up my technical game, but also my mental game. And it was a period during which I became uh, far more self-aware. I started to understand the distinct difference between my prior commercial career, where I was extremely goal orientated, always looking to you know, close the next client, do the next deal. Um, and in trading, what I had to learn was that I had to become process orientated. So I had to forget, forget about the goals um, and really focus on my trading plan, my process, and executing that with, with excellence. Um, so I, during that period, developed a, uh, a trade plan, business plan, extensively back-tested and forward-tested it. And then I came back to the markets uh, the beginning of 2008 with my own capital, uh, traded that uh, for a period of five years, um, annually profitable, and attracted the attention of family and friends who uh, wanted a piece of the action and so I set up a managed accounts business and the performance data you can see on the screen is uh, is that of the managed account service that I run and uh, again consistently profitable on an annual basis but not necessarily consistently profitable on a monthly basis or even multi-month basis and this is something that's incredibly important and I try to, to teach all the guys that I work with is that you you have to Put your, if, if, you're going, if, you, if you're going to get involved in trading as a, as a business, you have to remove the emotional investment in the outcomes of independent trades or even a series of trades. For me, it's not that, you know, I'm, I, I don't care about the outcome of the next trade or the, even the next 10 trades. Where my focus is, is on the next 100 trades. Because I know that if I adhere to my trading plan, that my edge will demonstrate itself over an extended series of outcomes. And so the, the most important figures for me really on this screen are, are down here. Uh, in an average losing month, I lose 2.32%. Uh, 
an average winning month is 7.96%. So you can extrapolate that out to, to the idea that um, I'm making two to three times what I lose uh, in a winning trade. And, um, and that's that, as long as I've got those metrics right, then I know that my business will continue uh, to be successful. So aside from my, my trading and my uh, managed account service, I also uh, provide a market, uh, resident market expert for Tickmill. I provide a, a daily market outlook and a, a chart of the day, which is a setup that I'm, I'm watching. Um, and you can subscribe to that through their blog on the website and you can get those delivered to your inbox. And uh, my other project or passion project really is, uh, is FX Career Swap, uh, who are in the emerging trading development, trader development business really, whereby we, uh, we take uh, retail trading talent, we underpin what they, what they know to date with a bespoke uh, training program. I also teach the 10 or now 11 um, strategies that I've consistently used over the past <coughs> 12 years to be uh, a profitable and consistently profitable trader. And, um, and once you complete the process, we then offer the opportunity to trade our, uh, our funds at zero personal risk and on a profit share basis. Um, there's actually a trial at the moment. You can get a free um, two week trial to that service. I'll just post that in the chat for anyone who's interested. You can follow up through there. Um, so that really gives you a, uh, a flavor of where I'm coming from. And so let's, uh, let's move into uh, what I see or where I see potential opportunities in terms of the markets. As always, firstly, reminder of the seasonalities, the seasonal factors that can be in play at the moment. August traditionally has been a, a very poor month for risk assets. We're not quite seeing that at the moment, but we're going to look at some charts and some um, underlying positioning structure in the market that uh, may still may still mean that we see a, uh, a pullback in, in risk assets. First, let's check in with the FX positioning update. So most of you, if you're active in the markets, will be aware that long positioning in the euro is at record levels. And traditionally, when, um, when, when a Financial instrument becomes so stretched in, in, one, in one direction, we tend to, not, not necessarily always, but we tend to see a corrective phase develop. And so that's, uh, that's being underpinned here by uh, positioning data from Credit Agricole, which <coughs> shows that this change in terms of the Eurozone fundamentals is attracting capital into the single currency. Um, but at the moment, that, uh, that positioning looks a little stretched. Another uh, element of positioning is, uh, this is the S&P 500, uh, the chart here you can see S&P 500. And what you've got measured down here is gamma exposure. Now this, uh, without getting too technical, um, gamma exposure is basically uh, what market makers, uh, have when they buy and sell options uh, from and to uh, their clients, um, they have a market risk uh, and need to either be buying or selling the underlying equity or future if they want to avoid going broke. Uh, this process is kind of tricky because options move differently in comparison to the underlying market, depending upon how far away from their strike price they are or the delta. And this sensitivity changes constantly. When dealers are highly exposed to this, uh, the change in the gamma, they either need to buy or sell futures with every point the market moves to adjust their hedge or delta hedging in order to stay neutral to its direction. Now, what we note here is this big spike in, in gamma exposure. Uh, the last time we saw a similar spike uh, was just prior to uh, the rollover uh, pre-pandemic. But you can see similarly when we've had spikes like this before, we have seen at least a pullback. I'm not, uh, I'm not suggesting that we're gonna see another uh, crash like we saw in March, but certainly there's the potential for a pullback. And that coincides with us, we move into the charts now. Uh, let me get the S&P here. This coincides with us retesting um, the prior highs. And if we take this chart out of it, you can see this period here was um, the dot-com bust. 
and you can see we had an initial sell-off and a pullback to retest the prior highs. And what we know here, and this is a weekly chart, is that we have momentum divergence as represented by this psych indicator. So price is retesting prior highs, but we can see momentum is telling us that there is weakness in the underlying market. That it prices the, the amount of uh, inertia that's required to, uh, to take prices back to these highs is, uh, is failing. And you can see the similar setup that we had in 2007, 2008, where we got that initial pullback, we retested, broke new highs in price, um, but you can see the momentum told us a different story. And what we're seeing at the moment here now is, uh, is prices retesting these prior highs. We could potentially uh, move a little higher here to test what could be a broadening top pattern. So, you know, we could be up at 3420, uh, currently trade 3374, but we have retested the prior highs. And what I want to pay attention to is this, uh, this divergence that we're seeing in terms of the momentum study. And then if we factor that into the idea of the gamma exposure in the market at the moment, we could see, uh, we could certainly have the potential or, or the, uh, the, re the necessary ingredients for a pullback here, at least. Um, so we want to pay, I'm paying close attention to this weekly chart. A couple of other weekly charts we're gonna look at in a minute, but if we get a close and, you know, obviously we've got the remainder of today and tomorrow, um, but if we've got to close back through 3320, so that's 50 S&P points away at the moment. But if that did happen, then that would be a warning sign. And certainly we could be back down looking at, uh, at the 3000 level um, in quite short order would be my guess. And then we have a 50% retracement back down at 2800. Those would be the initial targets if this pattern plays out. Now, if it doesn't play out and we get a close through the, through the, the broadening top here, at uh, about 34, let's say 34.30, then, uh, then really all bets are off at this stage to the downside. And what we'd actually be looking for would be a test of 37.18 to the upside as the, uh, as the measured move target versus this, uh, this decline here. So I wanna pay close attention to this close um, tomorrow and, uh, and see where we come out on the week if we get a bearish reversal. Um, but really, to, to get to get interested in this as an opportunity, you need to see last week what last week's lows taken out to uh, to get some momentum going to the downside. Uh, let's uh, let's take a look at the dollar index also on a weekly chart, and um, and it's noteworthy that the dollar index is sitting right on its uh, its trend line, uh, a ten year trend line almost, and um, and you can see that we've we've had some uh, some buying. Uh, partly driven last night by the Federal Reserve who um, released their minutes. And, um, and whilst they, they are te technically uh, dovish, um, the concerns with respect to the long lasting impacts on the economy from, uh, from the COVID crisis uh, really shook the markets a bit. And, um, and we saw some safe haven buying and uh, some money, or certainly some profit taking in the dollar at this stage. Again, we have to see where we close this week. But I mean, at the moment, we've got the potential for a pin bar reversal here of, um, of a 10 year trend line. Now, I'm, uh, as most of you who uh, have been here before or, or, or follow my work, um, I'm pretty bearish the dollar, uh, certainly into these, uh, these elections. But that said, I certainly see the scope for a, a correction here potentially. And, uh, and if we can hold this trend line on a closing basis, then that will, uh, will certainly set the stage for what could be a, uh, a corrective move. Uh, similarly, in the euro, we're sitting at that, the euro's uh, trend line versus the, uh, the GFC highs, 2008 highs. And, um, and again, we um, got to close just through it last week and we punched through it into week here. But let's see, uh, let's see what happens on the close this week, because if we've got to close back through um, 118, then certainly um, that, could, uh, that, that could encourage uh, some profit taking. And uh, when we look at the daily charts at the moment, I'll show you the areas where I would be looking for, for that to develop. Similarly with sterling, we're sitting in an interim um, three year trend line resistance with sterling. And, um, and again, we punched through into a week here, but it's all about the close. And so uh, we'll want to see uh, where we close. Um, guys, if you've got questions, if you, can, uh, if you can make a note of them and I'll open up uh, the Q&A at the end of the session. Um, 
it's just easy for me to run through the charts first of all and uh, let you know what I'm looking at and then I'll, uh, I'll cover off any questions at the end. Um, so yeah, Sterling, similar story here and we want to pay attention to, uh, to the close again on the weekly chart. Aussie <coughs> also at a major trend line and again we punched through it intra-week but uh, we're starting to see some supply up here um, as, as uh, represented by the tails on these candles. So I mean if the, uh, if the Aussie close is back through 71 uh, 45, let's see, 71.30, then uh, and certainly we can see some profit taking in the Aussie. And I, I'm, I'm not suggesting that we're, we're going to crater here, but certainly we could be back looking at the 68 handle um, before then making another run at this, this trend line. Um, so, and similar story in the Kiwi as well, I was looking. So the Kiwi took out its trend line, a couple of closes, but then ran into supply here at, uh, at this 67 handle. And we're now looking at a potential outside reversal week here to the downside after, uh, after taking out the prior week's highs, now pulling back. And if we go to close um, back below 65, that'll be a bearish, a bearish development for the Kiwi. And I see us certainly retesting 62 in, in the coming weeks, potentially into the back end of, of August here, early September. Uh, before then, we can be looking and thinking maybe about an inverse head and shoulders setup in the Kiwi for, uh, for a, a a move much higher um, into uh, into the autumn. Uh, so those are some of the the weekly charts that are, that I want to uh, wanted to draw your attention to. Uh, now let's go to the intraday charts. So, um, so this is the dollar index, the broader dollar index, and this is the pattern I'm looking for. Um, you can see here we've got a nice interim cycle subdivided into five waves, testing the descending trend line. Uh, support again, we've got that initial test. We've now got some uh, nice momentum divergence and, uh, and we got a bullish outside reversal yesterday. We didn't quite test the trend line, but um, certainly this 92 area looks like, it's got, uh, looks like it's got the attention of the buyers. Now, we could roll over again and we could get that 9170 test here, um, but at the moment, versus yesterday's close, uh, it looks looks pretty bullish here and now. And if it does play out, then I'm looking for a correction to develop here to ultimately get us back into the descending trend line resistance at 95, where certainly then I'd be looking for bearish reversal patterns to uh, set short positions. And I'd, I'd have a target at, at least down to this 90 level um, into, uh, into the October, November time, the elections in the US. Got a similar story in the equal weighted dollar index. Uh, Slightly more defined trend line here, so we'd need to to, to see this break above um, above this 12090 area to uh, to encourage a corrective view here. Um, the, obviously, with this dollar index, this is the Dow Jones dollar index. It's equally weighted versus the Aussie, the yen, sterling, and the euro. Whereas the broader dollar index is uh, is not equally weighted. It's like six major currencies. So keeping an eye on these these closes now in terms of the uh, the dollar index. Swissy obviously has a similar setup. Um, got this big bullish outside reversal from the descending trend line support. Nice subdivided interim wave pattern here. And if we can, uh, if we can punch through the overnight highs, 91.60, then I think we get a run up to 93.50 before uh, before we potentially roll over again and take a look at uh, at the 89 level of support. Dollar yen. Um, if we can hold. Yesterday's lows in dollar yen, I think we now get a, a move up to test this 108 area, which I've, uh, which I've talked about before in terms of a, uh, a symmetry swing. So when I talk about symmetry swings, what I'm saying is that this move here, we can see replicated here. Just tighten that up. And what we've got now versus this low is we'd have the additional confluence of this equality objective here. So putting us up into 108, uh, for the, uh, for the dollar yen. So we'll see if we can take it, in terms of trading this, if we take out the overnight highs, then you get a nice stop, 10 pips below the overnight lows, and you, uh, you have a run at this, this 108. Euro dollar <coughs> back into its descending, ascending trend line resistance for the key, key reversal pattern yesterday. So a bit of follow through already. I'm short the euro at the moment. And uh, what I'm looking for is basically a move down to this 116 area. Uh, again, you can see the, the interim uh, cycle completed. We've also got that divergence. Psych indicator starting to tick into negative territory. 
We've got the longer term uh, cycle from the RSI stochastic starting to negatively diverge and similarly negatively diverging and the shorter time frame. So uh, whilst we hold uh, these 119.50 highs, and I'm looking for a, a 116 test in the euro. Euro yen, uh, see the potential for a pullback in the euro yen here to test it, which will be a third test of this ascending trend line. I think this will be a great opportunity on the long side. So if we can see a pullback develop here into this 124, low 124 area, watch for bullish reversal patterns from this trend line. And you can have a target then up at this 129, which is the equality objective versus this pullback here. So taking us up into that 129. So keep an eye on any pullback in the euro yen to this 124 area and watch for bullish reversal patterns as, uh, as an opportunity to do something on the long side. <coughs> uh, sterling. So again, with sterling, similar scenario here. Um, we can see we've we broke new highs. And this uh, nicely subdivides into a, let's see if I've got this here. So we've got one, two, three, four, and then a five here into this high, which actually will be completing the, lot, the, the primary cycle third wave. Uh, so we get a pullback here in sterling versus the uh, 132.60 high here. And I've been looking for a test of this ascending trend line support, uh, probably to the 128. If we, uh, if we replicate this type of price action here, it takes us back into the 128. But again, once we get into that trend line, then what I want to be watching for are bullish reversal patterns. Um, you can look on the intraday charts, I, you know, hourly, four hour, I don't suggest anything lower than that. Um, but I mean, my preferred uh, trading time frame is obviously the daily chart. So bullish, bullish reversal pattern here. And then I think we can get that run up to test the, uh, the 135, 136, which is the, the major trend line for um for the do, uh, for sterling let's just go back to the weekly chart and i'll show you what i'm talking about so if we scroll zoom out here so you can see that we've got this trend line coming in now uh 135 in sterling so if we get a pullback on the daily it gives us a move down into this uh, 128 support area then you've got a great trade setup because you can uh, you can be looking long from that area to target that trend line at the 135 area. Let's take a look at the Aussie. Aussie putting in um, a ending diagonal pattern here. And like I say, I'm looking for this to, uh, to break down. I'm short the Aussie at the moment. And what I'm looking for is a breakdown to ultimately retest into this 68 area, which again highlighted on the, week, uh, the weekly chart here. Uh, let's go here. So if we can get a pullback into that, that well, I mean, we could, it could actually be a bit deeper. I, I was looking at 68, uh, 68, 20 uh, to 66.80 uh, will be the ideal area because then what we basically be setting up will be uh, this type of inverse head and shoulder scenario. And, um, and that would set some, some pretty big equality objectives in terms of the, uh, in terms of the Aussie to be trading meaningfully higher. Um, so, Again, tactically short at the moment, but, uh, but ultimately I'm looking for, uh, we'll be looking for higher prices in the Aussie. Um, so that's the, the Aussie pattern there. And again, this, these are all accompanied, you can see the momentum divergence that we're getting at the moment. The psych indicator is rolling over here about to potentially break the trend line support that it's developed since the, uh, since the price of the March lows. And so if that breaks down, then I see prices breaking down. And like I say, initially looking for 68, <laughs> but as I just mentioned, we could see uh, move into this 66 area as well. Uh, Kiwi, similar story here. So obviously we've got that in terms of the Kiwi, uh, the weekly chart, what we really want to pay attention to is if we close at current or lower prices, that's a, a bearish, bearish pattern in terms of the weekly chart, especially with these uh, long tails in terms of supply. So <clears throat> Kiwi through 65, should easily open up a move um, back down into uh, the 6150, 62, sorry, 6230 area where we broke out from. So keep an eye on that weekly close in the Kiwi. You can see it's already taken out the uh, trend line support in terms of momentum. We had significant momentum divergence. We also know going back from a seasonal perspective that uh, the Kiwi August is actually the worst month of the year from a seasonality perspective. 
for the Kiwi. So that is that. What else am I looking at? Swiss yen. Uh, look, looking similar to the euro yen, really. Just watching this trend line. This, these third tests of trend lines tend to produce a reaction. And certainly if we could get a move back down to test this 115.50 area and a bullish reversal pattern, then I'd be looking uh, to be long the, uh, the Swiss yen and, um, and see if we could take it up into the uh, projected trend line resistance, certainly into 119. So keep an eye on this uh, Swiss yen. That's a developing opportunity. Um, S&P we've already talked about. You can see it on the daily time frame here. We did get a reaction last night, but we'll see if we can get some follow through. And again, I'm not, uh, I'm not necessarily predicting the end of the world here with this, but in terms of initial targets, certainly we could see uh, 3,100 um, would be a symmetry swing objective versus this high. Um, last but not least, let's check in with the metals here. Uh, gold, obviously been on a tear. I talked in pre previous sessions with respect to the, uh, the positioning data that highlighted uh, a very stretched position in terms of ETF positioning, retail customers, very long gold ETFs. And uh, we got to pull back to retest the prior break point at that 1910 area. It did produce a reaction and certainly you could, you know, a tradable reaction. Um, but now we're, what, I, what we're looking at uh, versus this reversal yesterday, we take out these lows at 1923. We have a, a confluent target now, a confluence target. This is uh, the symmetry swing. So versus the last meaningful correction here gives us um, 1823. And then we have an equality objective versus this leg down and an equal leg from, from that swing high will put us into the 1800 area. And that would be an opportunity then to, uh, to develop new long positions uh, as we uh, certainly look to retest prior highs and potentially break out if we are going to see the dollar index roll over once again after a potential correction here. Similar story in silver. We've got the same pattern basically. Um, and we have this confluent target now at 22.20 to 22.40. Anything, once we get back up down into this area, watch for bullish reversal patterns um, to do something on the long side as, uh, as we should see these metals break out if the, uh, if the dollar is gonna roll over into the, uh, into the, into the fall here um, this year. And, into, and obviously with the, uh, the US elections looming. Okay, so those are, uh, those are the charts that, are, that I'm watching at the moment. Um, positions, like I say, I'm short the Euro, the Sterling and the, and the Aussie. And, um, and we'll see how this plays out. See, see if we get this weekly close. Really pay attention to these candles um, tomorrow because it uh, could be meaningful, certainly in the dollar index, sitting at that, uh, that trend line and, um, and potentially going to put in a... Uh, pin bar reversal here, which, uh, which could set up a, the pullback certainly back into those prior lows, that 94.50 area, potentially 95, or we could take back into this prior support area as high as 96. So, I mean, there are some upside, there's some upside potential there, but ultimately I'm looking for a lower dollar over time. Okay, so that's, uh, those are the charts I wanted to talk about and the, uh, the setups I'm watching. Does anyone have any questions? Is the indicator used moving average? Um, it's uh, the indicators I use are proprietary indicators. Uh, Ranjish, they um, oops, there we go. Um, they are volume weighted average price indicators. So here, hi to here. Do you have a microphone? to hear hello hi to hear how are you doing yes i'm doing well mr patrick yes uh well done for the technical class uh i have uh, noticed a lot so uh i have noticed uh you have been using only uh technical analysis plotting supports and resistance and just referring back to some few aspects of the fundamentals. So is there any correlation you have been maybe referring to as a reference
for the peers you have been explaining from the Swissy, the uh, Stalin, and the rest of the peers. I, I was lost. Maybe if you just say the level will just have to go to which maybe probably to this support level, maybe it will bounce back to another level high for grabs of profit. So I, my question here is, uh, is there any reference to correlation? Yeah, I think maybe. Yeah, I mean, use? yeah, obviously because of, I'm, I'm looking at the dollar majors. I mean, I, I, I come, I'm, the most, yeah. most important part to me are really, uh, are, are the dollar index because the dollar drives uh, most of the uh, most foreign exchange trades. I mean, you have to have a, a view on the dollar and understand where the dollar's going to effectively trade all the dollar majors. So, I mean, if, I, if I'm anticipating there's going to be a correction in the dollar index, then I'm anticipating that the dollar majors are going to correct lower. Does that make sense? Right. Yes, okay. So you are referencing with the uh, maybe economy of the USD. That's right. All right, all right. Thank you, Patrick. You're welcome, to hear. Thanks for the question. Welcome. Uh, Lewis, why not bullish wedge? Um, for me, Lewis, uh, let's just go back to the Aussie. Um, the, the, the issue for me here in terms of the wedge, Lewis, is the momentum divergence. Where momentum starts to fail, that, uh, that more often than not will inform uh, where we're going to see price uh, correct, if we're going to see price correct. Like I say, I'm not anticipating that we're going to, you know, that we're going to see some major crash here, but I certainly see a tactical trading opportunity to, to trade the Aussie on the short side and then look for potential to do something on the long side down the line. But in the near term, the, um, the technical setup at the moment suggests that we're running out of steam here on the top side at the moment. Uh, we've had a good run and, um, and we're now at the, in, a, in what technically would be referred to as an ending diagonal pattern. And that's additionally confirmed by the fact we're seeing this momentum divergence. And certainly if we get a close through this uh, trend line support here on the, uh, using the psych indicator, that would encourage that view further. Does that make sense to us? Okay, do we have any other questions? If you don't have a question, uh, it would be helpful if you just type an, an N in the chat box and then I'll know that uh, we, uh, we're, we're done here for today. Okay, good stuff. I'm gonna wrap this one up here. And, um, and like I say, pay attention to these weekly closes, uh, certainly in the dollar index, Euro, Sterling, Aussie and, uh, and the Kiwi all look very interesting heading into, uh, into tomorrow evening. Um, okay, I'm gonna wrap this one up here, guys, and then we will reconvene same time uh, next Thursday. Have a great weekend, everybody. Thanks.